Hello everyone, my name is Mist, and today I will be reviewing Now Presents Off The Hook. This was released on May 21st, 2002, and mainly is one of my least favorite albums. This song features 20 R&B and hip-hop songs that were popular at the time, so if I give a lot of negative opinions, that's why. I don't know why I'm torturing myself with this album for my first review as a 26-year-old, but anyways, let's start this off with... Welcome to Atlanta where the play is play And we ride on them things like every day Big I don't think I need to explain what the song is about This was a hand track on a ludicrous album Word of Mouth And samples Houdini's 5 Minutes of Funk And the Miracles Do It Baby To me, the best part of this song is ludicrous As he showcases how good of a rapper he is on this song However, as much as I like him in some of the production I don't like this more It's still better than I thought But we will see if the rest of the album holds up this next song though, I already knew what I was getting into. This is B2K's first song and it won't be the last time I, we talk about this song. I didn't find any background but that doesn't take away from the song. I do actually like this song and I don't think it's bad at all. This has a nice sound to it that doesn't sound annoying and the group are actually good singers. This won't be the last time we talk about the group, especially Omarion as he has solo songs we will talk about in the future, but this is still good. And now on to a song I am not familiar with. Once again, I am not annoyed with this. This has a sound that I like and it is much darker than some other upbeat songs. I have always enjoyed what I have heard from Nas and once again, he shows how talented he is as a rapper. There is a song from Jagged Edge that annoys me and this song shows that they do sound well in music. I think that this is a good song and it's definitely one of my favorites. And now on to a song that was made when the artist was around 14 to 15 at the time. And now I get annoyed by a song. This song also serves as a theme song for the 2002 film Like Mike. I was certain that this song used a sample and I was proven correct as this uses a sample of Roxanne Shantae's Have a Nice Day. And this features uncredited vocals from Fundisha. Now a good thing about this song is Bow Wow's rapping. I already knew he was a good rapper as I am a Masked Singer fan and saw how well he did in Season 3, but I don't like the other parts of the song. It doesn't sound good to me at all and I just can't like it. Now onto a song I will be semi-negative about. I believe that this is Aaliyah's best song. I won't get into the background because there is a lot to go through and I forgot if I covered the song already. So giving in to my thoughts, I really like the darker sound production and Aaliyah has a nice voice. However, I don't think they did enough to really get my attention. It is still a good song, but the, if they had done something more with the production, it would be one of my favorite songs. Now let's talk about a rapper who we have seen on this channel before. This song annoys me a lot. The production is easily the worst part of the song, and the worst part is that the Neptunes have produced better songs than this. Also, I don't think that this production works well with Mr. Gal's voice either, as he doesn't sound as good as he usually is. This is easily his worst song, and if I ever see a song that is worse than this, I will be surprised. And now on to someone Mr. Gal has worked with in the past. This is a surprisingly good song. This song has that pop R&B sound that I like, and it really suits Joe's voice really well. I did not know what I was going to expect with this song, but I am happy that it ended up being a good song. I would recommend this song, especially if you are a pop R&B fan. And now on to another song that I don't care for. This is a completely different song from the original I'm Real, and simply put, I don't like the song at all. It is already clear that I like her pop songs more than her R&B slash hip hop songs, and this is one of the reasons why. It also doesn't help that Ja Rule sounds completely checked out at certain points in the song. I also don't like how it sounds as it just sounds boring. It will be completely fine if I never have to listen to the song again. Now on to someone who appeared earlier in this review. This has a sound that goes from soft spoken to hard hitting. From what I found, Nas was inspired by Phil Collins and wanted to take the vibe from In The Air Tonight. This song can be hard to listen to due to the lyrics and the production does have a much darker sound to it than other songs I have heard. I do like that this song has a sort of hard truth to it that we have seen in other songs, but this is done with such anger that it still sounds original to me. I do like some of Nas's music so I am happy that this is another one. And now on to a slew of artists I've never listened to, starting with... And don't you forget it. 
This is the first of five artists on this album that I have never heard of before. This song became popular after its music video was released and is known for its strong Stevie Wonder influence. The song is really upbeat and I can see this song being played a lot in clubs and parties. This is a really good song that I think can put anyone into a dancing mood. And now on to the second of five artists I've never heard of before. This is going to be the first instance where a song's length does not upset me. The song is just really heartfelt and easy to listen to. I love this song, I like the piano melody, I like the voices, there's a lot I like about the song. This song is almost 5 minutes long and usually that upsets me, but this time, I don't mind the length. Now on to the third artist of 5 artists I have never heard of before. I have mixed feelings about the song. I don't really mind the song, but I wouldn't say I love the song. The song just sounded weird to me the whole time and it was just unenjoyable. The song isn't bad, but I couldn't get into it like I could for the other songs. The song is in such a weird spot that while it isn't good, it isn't bad either. And now moving on to a bit of familiarity artist-wise, we have... We don't need your education. We don't want no I don't think this song is for me. I believe that the singers are really heartfelt about this song, and considering past songs I've listened to, I'm not surprised about what I heard. The song is about life in rough areas and shows that a lot of bad things happen in the world and for me, I always try to look at the better side of things. This is a very emotional song but I don't really like how it sounds. I just don't like the sound of it even though I understand the use of the slow melody. But now on to the fourth of the five I have never heard of before. I did not expect the song to sound like this. The song has two samples in it. The first being Fun by Brick released in 1977 and the second being Top Villain by Audio 2 released in 1987. The song sounds interesting in the fact that I have never listened to an R&B song that sounds like this. It has a different sound and it sounds really interesting as a result. I want to say I like this but I don't think I will listen to this in the future. And on to the final artist I have never listened to before. I can't eat, I can't sleep anymore. This song is really forgettable. This song has a nice sound but it's hard to remember because every time I listen to this song I immediately forget how it sounds. When a song is forgettable to me, it means that I don't like it that much, and I believe it to be true in this case. I just don't like the song that much, and it could be better, but I can't say that this is a good song. And now on to familiar artists, but songs that I haven't talked about yet, starting with... This is one of the most obvious samples I have ever heard. It's not hard to figure out that this song samples Year So Vain by Carly Simon. This song is about a man who attempted to extort money from Jackson. The song actually has Carly Simon, but the remix brings in Missy Elliott, so as you can expect, we are talking about the remix for this review. I can't compare this to the original as I have not listened to it, but I can talk about this. This song, I don't really like how it sounds, and I think it could have been handled better given the dark tone of the song. It could be better, but I just don't like it. Now on to an artist I think I will ever talk about once. Ooh, baby, you want me? This is probably the most different out of all the songs on this album. I'm gonna skip the background because I don't feel comfortable discussing that meaning, so I will be focusing on the song itself. The song basically mixes rap music with rock, giving it the most unique sound on the album. This has also been remixed by Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails and was heavily censored and the only way to listen to it uncensored is through a rare promo disc. Paul Oakenfield also remixed the song and later on in 2020, the band Wargasm covered the song. Admittedly though, I don't like listening to the song. The lyrics are the reason why, which sucks because I like how the song sounds. Overall, the lyrics are what's keeping this from being a good song. Now, these next two songs we have already talked about before, so let's see if our opinions change. Starting with... I talked about the song last month, so I doubt my opinions have changed that much. I will not talk about the background of songs I have already discussed for this and future EPs as well. It's a song I do like quite a bit, but it's not one I would actively seek out. It's not bad as I enjoy the sound, and he is a good rapper, but like I said, I won't actively seek this out. And keeping up with the familiarity, we have... Five. Once again, I don't expect my opinions to have changed that much. I talked about this song last month as well, and like the last song, I won't seek this out either. Everything I said in the last segment can practically be part of this segment as well. I don't know if we'll ever see Petey Pablo again, but if we don't, this is a good song to end off with. And now on to our final song with an artist we are talking about for the first time with the song. Dead. 
This song is surprisingly pleasant to listen to. It has a nice sound that doesn't sound annoying and I was having fun listening to it. I do realize though that it is easily forgettable and if a song is enjoyable, that is not a good thing. I do really like this song and everyone sounds great on the song, but I also wish it was more memorable. And that is it for this review. There are a lot of good songs, but there were also some bad songs as well. Admittedly, this was hard to write and I had a hard time staying motivated to do this review. Hopefully this is the only time I am like this. For my favorite song, I have to go with Someone to Love You by Rough Ends. Other songs I like will be in the description below. Next time we are back to the main series for now 10. Until then, my name is Miss, and I will see you next month for another review, and happy Thanksgiving. Take care.